Hello there, greetings to you, and many thanks for joining us on Rwanda Television News tonight. We do hope you, has, you had yourselves a great and productive day. And now, this is what makes our top stories tonight. Economic experts demonstrate that they believe in the continued slowdown of the inflation and the efforts put in by the government of Rwanda to continue curbing prices on the markets. Gynecologists say that high blood pressure in some women during pregnancy or after giving birth is a serious concern. A very good evening to you once again, and thank you for joining us on Rwanda Television News. My name, as always, is Sam Kalisa. And mine, Martina Avera. How are you doing, Martina? I'm very good. How are you doing? Very, very great. How is the air going? Uh, same energy. We started it well, we must end it well, on okay. the high note. Great. And you? Very good, uh, following up on my resolutions. Absolutely. Okay. So we'll start it off uh, in, with uh, health matters. A gynecologist uh, say that uh, high blood pressure among uh, women during a pregnancy or after giving birth is a serious concern, as it's even a ranked second leading cause of death of women, according to the World Health Organization. Adam Squizera starts us off tonight with this report. Some women with high blood pressure say that they have been advised to take precautions. At the hospital, they found that my heart beat rate was at 168. They told me to reduce salt and eat more vegetables, reduce sugar and drink much water. At Tinya Health Center in Gasawa District, in the antenna care, some pregnant women are getting knowledge on how they should take care of themselves. One of the things that these women are told by the nurse who usually take care of them is the problem of blood pressure known as preeclampsia. Some heads of health centers says that the pregnant mothers get more monitored daily hence to cope up with that problem. The way we know she's having that blood pressure is that we first do diagnosis and that's where we notice that the rates are very high plus other tests we conduct which might show us that there is proteins in her urine. That's where we notice that there is a serious issue. Dr. Butoy Alphonse, a gynecologist at La Croix du Sud Hospital, says that the preincropasia is a problem that occurs in about 10% of women when they are 5 months pregnant. <laughs> The blood pressure might be caused by placenta that might have some poisons growing in it, which damages the veins that support the womb, which results to a very high blood pressure, as this might develop some effects to both the mother and child. Dr. Wutoi says that high blood pressure and protein in the urine are the major symptoms of pre pressure, which later causes some changes in the body. You may have a headache or feel dizzy in your eyes, but when it escalates to that preeclampsia severe, she starts to get hurt in the stomach, as they bring some other changes, including blood clotting, as well as the kidney damage. Dr. Utoi says that taking care of those affected by these issues is very difficult, which is why women are advised to make more checkups on their health status. Many comes here when they have already reached a complicated level where the blood got already clotted and the damage of kidney and liver. On that extent, we request her to abort the pregnancy just to save the life of mother, as that's why we urge them to take care of themselves, especially when they are pregnant. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, the preinclapegia and inclapegia are the second leading cause of death for many women, and this is also the same case in Rwanda. Adam Squizera, RTV News. Thank you, Squizera, for that report. Now, on the 11th of January 1994, the Honorable Retired Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire, then a force commander of the United Nations Assistance Mission for Rwanda, sent his infamous genocide fax to UN headquarters, warning of the preparations of the genocide against the Tutsi. The Minister of National Unity and Civic Engagement, Dr. Jean Damasen Wizimana, expounds on the context of this fax. Eh nibyo ku itariki 11 mutarama 1994 It is true on the 11th of January 1994 General Romeo Dallaire 
had information from one of the Inherahamne leaders in Kigali City named Jean-Pierre Turatsinze, the information had three major points. One was that Inherahamne militias were trained and given arms. Second is that these Inherahamne could kill 100,000 people in one hour. Thirdly, there were various arsenal deposits in Kigali allocated to Inherahamne militias for using. Some of the deposits were in Kabuga's house in Jikondo, and he said that for the information he provided, the exchange was for his safety and his families. The information also demonstrated that Turatinze, as an Inherahamne leader, and other Inherahamne were given orders to make lists of Tutsi living in Kigali and their precise locations. After being aware of this, Romeo Daler commanded his subs to confirm the info. He found the arsenal deposits and informed Daler that the info was accurate. Then he sent the fax to his superiors at the UN headquarters, namely General Paul Baliri and Iqbar Riza, requesting for freezing these arsenals in 24 hours. The response given to Daler was bad because they said that the information was going to be shared to President Habjarimana, and the freezing of arsenals was to be not considered as it was not part of the mission of the Minoan. Minister Wizimana reiterates that after being aware of this information, the United Nations made no move. At the UN level, nothing was done. Rather, General Daler informed President Habjarimana as he was commanded, and Habjarimana said he would work on it, yet it was part of the plans. But Daler and Jacques Roger informed also about the information they had to the embassies of USA, France, and Belgium. There is also a fax from the then ambassador of France to Rwanda written to France Foreign Ministry and President's Office. This is included in the Vicent de Clerc's report, demonstrating that this fax was of 12th January 1994. A day later, in the fax of the French ambassador, he demonstrated that there are arsenals stocked, and he used terminologies like, the information we have is strong on facts and true. This demonstrates that there were facts of a being planned genocide against the Tutsi. As Rwandans prepared to commemorate for the 30th time the genocide against the Tutsi, Minister Vizimana states that turning a blind eye by the international community serves a message to Rwandans specifically. The message it serves is found in Rwandans' a choice, found in the Constitution. That is, Rwandans will continue to demonstrate the country's history, the genocide against the Tutsi. The second is the 2020 research demonstrating the reconciliation barometer. The commemoration of the genocide serves as one of the events that enhance greatly the reconciliation among Rwandans. It is on a 99.5% rate. Domunya Rwanda is on the rate of 99.3%. And moving, moving ahead to justice matters, the Gatura Genje court in Kamonyi district has started the hearing, uh, the case involving uh, nine people uh, who are charged with uh, various crimes, including a uh, destruction of buildings and rehab, uh, rebellion against uh, the uh, court uh, decisions. We do have the details. The defendants, Muka Karangwalea and Mutangana Eric, are accused of destroying a building that does not belong to them and rebelling against court decisions. The case originates from the wall of the building of one floor in Rienzi cell of Runda sector, where six men and one lady came in the morning of December 19th, 2023, and destroyed the wall of the building that was bought by Epiphany Mukamunga in an auction conducted by GT Bank. The prosecution revealed that on December 19th, 2023, Muka Karangwarea and Mutangana Eric brought six workers to destroy the wall of the building in the plot with UPI 405, a crime that the prosecutor says is punishable by the law. 
The defendants indicated that the wall they destroyed was actually in their land with UPI 406 rather than in the plot that was sold in the auction as the prosecution claimed and also shown to the authorities. Hence, the defendants' lawyers opposing that no crime was committed. When asked the reason as to why they were involved in the incidents, those who were used to destroy the property noted that they were hired by Muka Karangwalea with the main contractor by the name of Nio Mugaba, revealing that the agreed price to destroy the wall was 80,000 Ronan francs. At the beginning, a down payment of 55,000 Ronan francs was made. When asked if they didn't know if the property was auctioned, they all indicated that they only did what they were hired to do without a negative intention in mind. They requested the court to be released. The prosecution accused Muka Karangwalea and Eric Motangana with the crime of destroying building that does not belong to them and rebelling against the court's decisions. Those who were hired to destroy the property were accused of complicity in destroying another person's property and the prosecution asked the court to charge them with prison sentence of three years and a fine of three million Ronan francs. The plaintiffs requested punitive damages amount of 8.5 million Ronan francs including attorney's fees. Economic experts demonstrate that they believe in the continued slowdown of the inflation rate that is currently on 6.4%. Curbing inflation is one of the 18th edition of Omushichirano resolutions. Prince Manzi, Prince Manzi with more. The National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda demonstrates that in December 2023, market prices in Rwanda increased by 6.2% compared to December 2022. In November 2023, the market prices increased by 9.4%. In 2023, there was when this rate boosted to 21%. Cultivators say that some of the food prices reduced as a result of availability of the produce in this quarter. Beans are currently on 600 Rwanda francs and 60,000 in the sack of 100 kilograms. We currently have a good produce and the price we reduce in the future. In December 2023, market prices in urban regions increased by 6.4% compared to December 2022. Market prices in November 2023 were on 9.2%. In rural regions, market prices increased by 6.1% compared to the same month in 2022. Prices in November 2023 increased by 9.6%. Buyers are happy that the basic foods prices are no longer high as in recent days. The seventh resolution of the 18th edition of Mushichirano that took place in February 2023 is to continue to implement measures to curb inflation. Strato Abdiarimana, an economic expert, demonstrates that this market prices decrease is promising that things are returning to normal. The export contribute to the locally made and this increase the goods availability at the market and this results into a price decrease. We are now expectant for a price pace that is not greater than 5% and people will continue buying freely. The Director General of the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda, Yusuf Murangwa, reiterates that the current climate condition impacted highly the increase in agriculture produce, a fact for a continued decrease of prices. It requires that even in this season A, it continues to be better for this momentum to continue. The rainfall is good in this season. We will have to make our research and see the appropriate impact on market prices. What we are currently witnessing on markets is the decrease of the prices. It is expected that in this year, the pace of the market prices variety will be between 2 and 8 percent. On the other hand, the trade flow between the countries in the Great Lakes region contributes to the availability of goods at the Rwanda market and scalping prices increase. Prince Mazi, Altivi News.
Thank you, Prince. Yes. Moving ahead, Gatsibo district residents in the eastern province of Rwanda say that they, after the establishment of the Ichijumba one-stop shop, the sweet potatoes they produce or they grow are going to be a source of income to them. This is what they had to say. At this Ichijumba one-stop shop located on the Kajitumba Chigali Road, travelers will be able to be given various food delivery services with a specialty of preparing sweet potatoes. Residents say that sweet potatoes lack the market in this region, but will no longer be the case. We're going to have a market of sweet potatoes cultivators, and we'll be able to develop ourselves, and this is also a great place where one can get out with the family. What it means to the development of a resident here is that our produce was given value and we are going to have a significant income from this. The manager of the Chijumba one-stop shop, Jean-Marie Vianney Habomuremi, states that such facility is for the residents and aims at supporting and collaborating with them towards their development. We do receive a great number of people requesting for our products. We aim at providing all the products in need, and what we also request is for those that sell such products to work with us. We are also aiming at working with many cultivators because we aim at making the sweet potatoes flow that will require a great amount of produce. We are also happy the sweet potatoes that we use are rich in vitamin A. The Gatibo District Administration demonstrates that establishing the Ichijumba one-stop shop is not only for supporting the farmers in the region, but also enhancing tourism in this region. The management of Ichijumba one-stop shop stays at the shop hired over 100 people. And that's all from us here at RBS Rwanda Television News. On behalf of the entire news production as well as the technical team, many thanks for being with us. My name is Tays Kalisa. And mine Martina Arreda. I will say up until next time. Stay safe. And have a great evening.